All right, you guys. So we are diving back in to the 4chan um, frat boy theory. Now, we are not doing it in this case. In this case, this is the prequel, right? The setup for it. Um, last time we had been talking about it, we went through multiple different videos, covered a whole background of uh, information on why we feel like the uh, the Greek life could be problematic and why it deserves to be looked into further. We had a lot of good statistics that came out of it. If you guys haven't Watch these videos here, and it'll catch you up to where we are now. But we started covering some of the deaths in the Moscow area. Well, we are diving back into that. Now, we started the furthest back, and now we are up to the closest here. So uh, I, anytime there is a, a life lost, right, uh, that needs to be... The severity of that situation should be recognized. Um, so I, I want to take a minute to, before we dive into all the theories and everything, um, just speak directly from Hudson Lindau's obituary. And that's who we're talking about now. Um, this was a Sigma Chi fraternity brother and unfortunately lost his life the same year that the Idaho Four massacre happened he um died april 30th or may 1st of 2022 so hudson lindau february 13th 2003 to april 30th 2022 boise idaho hudson r lindau was truly one of a kind born in boise idaho on february 13th 2003 to uh, his mother and his father. Hudson was a 2021 graduate of uh, Timberline High School. Hudson was a friend and a helper to all whose love and friendship brought people together from all walks of life. People were drawn to Hudson's personality. At home, he, was gra he grounded each household with infectious goofiness. His personal philosophy was to live in the moment and be a better person every day. Hudson's empathy was legendary. He was quick with a smile and a kind word. Hudson passed away on Saturday, April 30th, 2022, on the University of Idaho campus in Moscow, Idaho, where he studied environmental science. His passing at the aptly named Paradise Creek is an enduring reminder of the gift Hudson was to the world. Hudson leaves behind scores of broken-hearted friends, many of whom have held impromptu vigils in his honor, both in Boise and Moscow. Friends and family who have attended these gatherings each carry a unique and personal connection with him. Hudson's gift, gift of expressing love came in many forms, from a genuine hug to a smile or even a reassuring look from across the room. Hudson looked forward to traveling the world and experiencing many cultures. He always enjoyed spending time with his best friend and roommate, Kai, who taught him Korean life through his country's language and cuisine while preparing to visit Korea together. He recently traveled to the Pacific Ocean with friends and was always at peace near the water. Hudson especially enjoyed the time with family. He loved family events where the entire extended family was present. Hudson was an incredible big, big brother. He shared an extremely close bond with his sister, Eva, and was adored by his youngest sister, Remy, who loved his silly personality. He was an avid skier and enjoyed close times with his dad. Ava and friends on the slopes. His near daily calls with his mom spoke of the love they shared. Hudson is survived by a whole bunch of family. Uh, he is also by his grandparents uh, and then his paternal grandparents um, that say they will miss him and his unconditional love. Um, a celebration of life will be held on Saturday, June 4th, 2020. Two. So, really sad. 
Um, what do you know about him? Um, I know that he was friends with Ethan from the Idaho Four, you know, murders. Very and close friends from what we understood. He was good friends with Ethan and um, he got supposedly really drunk and fell into paradise creek and drowned in like an inch of water yeah correct or two inches of water right 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 um and i i just i want to run down these ideas with you guys okay i think it's really important and and this is again one of those topics where it's really important how we talk about it right because i want to be respectful but i need to ask the questions um so we're gonna make sure we do it respectfully um there's also an infamous picture of him in front of the 1122 king road house yes there is yes there is absolutely absolutely um but uh Literally an inch of water, you guys. Um, So there's a lot of theories out there. What we know is that, and there's very little to know about this. Do you know that? Yeah. So, uh, and for those of you just catching up, we've tried to get information on this and it is sealed. They do not respond to FOIA requests. They send it straight to their legal department, okay? Okay. Um, so you can't get the police report. You can't get anything. I don't know if it's a time thing and the case is not officially closed, similar to like the Brent Kopaka thing. I I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm still trying to figure that out, but it is insane. If this is an accidental death, I know why be so secretive. It makes no sense. And we even have proof here of requests, you know, being made and, and nothing being done the, where the only response is, Hey, uh, I got all your messages, but we sent you to legal. They should have reached out to you and then just dead silence. So, um, we can't get anything. You guys, I don't know if they're, they try and say it's for the respect of the family because maybe there was more substances in his blood than just alcohol. But one thing that I got a question here, right? is um, we've seen the management of the crime scene at the Idaho for massacre. Um, I tend to feel like that's a reflection of a general work product that we could expect to see in other cases, right? So uh, how do we know that there aren't things being missed here? How do we know that? They aren't releasing autopsy. They aren't talking about any other marks that were on his body. You guys know the autopsy body layout where they are supposed to identify every single mark, scar, scab, uh, anything. Yeah, they mark any identifying marks whatsoever, any trauma to basically just an outline of a body on the paperwork. So you would think that they would have the model, right? Well. What's the other thing in any investigation? The toxicology report. Mm -hmm. We don't have that either. Hmm. Yeah. Wouldn't that be interesting to find out he was sober? That, That would be interesting to find out. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing we have is uh, a police statement here. that says on on May twenty on May first, twenty twenty two, at approximately eleven twenty eight a.m., the Moscow Police Department received a report of a body found in Paradise Creek near College Avenue. Moscow Police Department officers and detectives arrived on scene and began an investigation. The body had has been positively identified as nineteen year old Hudson R. Lindau of Boise, Idaho. At this time. Foul play is not suspected. Next of kin has been notified and the investigation is ongoing. That's May 1st. Foul play is not suspected. And what's the date he died? May 1st. Oh. Yeah. On day one, day one, 
they're saying no foul play. So could an investigation even happen at this point? Like, could you even make that assertion, especially considering it's literally the morning you found him? Right. Or did the storyline that best fit the community in college get rolled out and that's what we stuck to. And that reminds me of something that reminds me of the police coming out after the Idaho four murders <clears throat> saying, don't worry. It was targeted. You guys are not at risk. All good here. The public's right. not at risk. And then quickly walked that back when they started being questioned. Cause they're like, right. Well, yeah, we don't have a suspect. We don't know who did it. So I guess technically you should be on the lookout. <laughs> right. Exactly. Stay vigilant. So to me, this sounds like they're responding for whatever works best for the school and community, not from a police perspective, to keep the community physically safe. Right. It's not for the community. It's for the school. It's for, it's what's it's for best for the school. Gains is what it feels like. Right. I don't, I don't have evidence of that. I think this is good evidence towards creating a potential theory or hypothesis goal. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, there's, It's depressing. Like, there's no way that these police officers could have known. Within the first 12 hours, they came out and said that, uh, you know, it, it's not suspected. Foul play is not suspected. Yeah, it's absurd. I'm curious what happened leading up to that. Was the coroner involved? Did they talk to anybody? Kathy Mabbitt was the coroner. She yeah, but when that statement was put out. Oh, Right. Did they had what they even... happened before this statement to give them the uh, OK to to roll this out? What time was Hudson found? Like what, what time 11 was 30? What time was the call? Um, I mean, they they got there at 1130, 1128. Huh? Yeah. And what time did they release that statement? Does it say the date and time? Um, At the it bottom. doesn't show the time. Okay. But the date, yeah, it's it's the date of the crime. So crazy. Yeah. It is. It is. So where this really started getting a lot of attention and drawing a connection here is uh, with a post that was posted to Twitter and the post read, I have questions. Moscow LE law enforcement has been running with this whole, nothing like this has ever happened here narrative. So does anyone care to explain this? U of I student H Hudson Lindau was found dead in paradise Creek on five, one of 2022. You read that right. Another student from U of I died earlier this year. And he's not the only one. Right. You're right. Yeah. Context. On 4-30-2022, the night before, Delta Tau Delta held its 90th annual uh, ball where Xana, Maddie, Jake, uh, and JS were... Show Walter. Yep. We're all in attendance. Hudson's body was found the next morning in the creek right outside Greek Row. Hudson's death was immediately ruled an accidental drowning. Crazy, right? This post further read, could this mean literally nothing? Or could mean literally nothing, but, he, but also here's a picture of Hudson's out here's a picture of Hudson outside the girl's house and a map to see where his body was found in relation to the frats and sororities. One of Hudson's friends blurred out in the photo is Delta Tau Delta's president. The same frat uh, Showalter was supposedly kicked out of and riddle me this. Where was 
Where are all the stories on this investigation? Police immediately said there was no foul play upon finding his body. How? What led to him ending up in the creek that night? Everyone was just like, oh, he drowned and moved on. The the post at last read, not trying to create conspiracy theories here, but for a small town, uh, there sure are some crazy coincidences. I, I make it make sense. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Make it make sense. I agree with that. And we're these are this is why we're asking these questions here, right? Because uh in this video, in these few videos that we posted, we had some very big questions and community-based questions around the fraternities. Um, you know, it, it, is fraternity life feeding unhealthy behaviors in a way where it's creating uh you know frat brothers that are more likely to end up in situations like this because when you look at the national stats it feels that way it does so there there have been i'm not going to use the word conspiracy theories but there have been people questioning whether the Idaho 4 crime had something to do with this did these four I've questioned it myself. Yeah. Did these four know something? Was Ethan unhappy with this current story? Was Ethan uh, was he able to find out more information? Is there really more to this? Yeah, as soon as I found out that Ethan was friends with Hudson, like pretty good friends with him and they were both in Sigma Chi, um, and that there was a fight at Sigma Chi that night. Um, I immediately started questioning that, you know, at, at face value, everyone's like, well, the fight at Sigma Chi, like it was about, you know, Xana and he was made fun of like this roid rage guy is not going to freak out over a girl and somebody saying, you know, he's on steroids, which we're covering um, next, but yes. Yeah. And, and go like commit this nearly perfect crime is what they always say but what if it's not nearly perfect what if the investigators were so inept they just completely overlooked dna and evidence right or corrupted it in some way to where it couldn't be used like we have three other males dna there and right, these are friends and close in close vicinity what if they're like okay well we cleared those people because they were sleeping um, and their other frat brother says they were sleeping. So, right. I I don't want to focus on that. Um, I want to stay focused on this because we're going to talk about that in the next story. So, okay. <laughs> um, because yes, I agree with you. However, I think that the evidence that we're seeing based on this crime here is supporting the additional evidence to the misclassification of the case. Actually, we don't even know if it's a misclassification. We have no idea. They slapped a sticker on it and committed to that, even when they got called out for it and, and had to backtrack, but then came out with uh, a statement saying, well, actually we do think it's this and we think it's this, you know? Um, and, and it was, it was done in a really shady way and it felt very similar to this where Somebody lost their life here, okay? It's not only just losing their life. They very quickly ruled it an accidental drowning. Then on top of that, they have made the police paperwork, which is public accessible, right? It, by law, we are supposed to be able to receive access to these documents, and nobody can. Everybody is stonewalled. I've been asking around trying to find, hey, have you seen anybody that's been able to get this? Have you seen anybody that's been able to get this? We've tried to get it and nobody can get it. Nobody. It's impossible. All right. So help me understand that. If this is just an accidental drowning, then what is the secrecy around this? Yeah. If it's an accidental drowning, there is no need to hide an autopsy report. There is no need to hide a toxicology report. There is no need to be so secretive. I mean, why, if there's so many theories and rumors going around and it really is just an accidental drowning, why not settle the rumors and show some proof? It doesn't make it's sense. It's absurd. It's I, absurd, I which I think immediately indicates 
they're hiding something. I mean, is that not the next logical step here? I feel like that's a, a fair assumption. Absolutely. So, you know, if anybody from that area watches this, I, I, I don't see how you could watch this and like see these details and not understand how uh, people are at like begging the question of what is going on here. What is going on here other than not following the laws and the expected rules, regulations of our justice system nationally, not giving the general public the access to this report, these reports, which are our rights, uh, unless there's an open investigation, unless, you know, there's some reasons why we wouldn't get them. None of that's going on here. If this has been ruled an accidental drowning case closed, right? Moved on. Uh, and and people are asking these questions. Yeah. Why? If, if case is closed, there's no reason to continue not giving the reports. And if I were living in Moscow, Idaho, I would be a very concerned citizen and I wouldn't feel very safe. Right. And and who out of the four was interested in true crime? Kaylee. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe she went looking for answers. Maybe, maybe I'm not sure, but I know that I feel like this hasn't got enough of positive attention. Right. And we're just asking the questions. I thought Riot podcast is not here to answer the questions. We'll no. give information, you know, the scientific background and everything where we have it. Um, but I don't think we can answer these questions. This is yet again, another puzzle that we are not given the tools that we need to solve it and understand it. And we don't even understand why. Yeah. I mean, the police should have solved it. The police should have looked into it and they should have given that information to the public. Like that's how these things are supposed to work. I'm curious if Hudson's family have received the autopsy report. If they've received anything. Well, yeah, I, I get where you're going with that statement. I don't think that the public should just trust in the police's report, though. I am against that type of behavior. I, I don't think we should trust a police investigation. Um, I think it's important to draw our own conclusions by being uh, critical, you know? Yeah, I, I think we should obviously scrutinize, scrutinize their, their work critique their work pay attention to what's going on it is that is how this is supposed to work in america that's the constitutional that's the basis of our constitution and our country is being able to do that um because the people are supposed to run the country anyone who's in yeah. government is supposed to be in service to us um and if if you argue against that i mean i don't understand that it's like the American way. It just that's how it's supposed to be. Um, but it seems like they want to avoid. It just seems they want to avoid that. Like pretend scrutiny. these things aren't happening, right? So it does seem like they want to pretend they're not happening. Play. Let's play. Flip the coin here, right? And we'll we'll look at it from a good faith, full trust perspective. Uh, I can only assume that. This is being done in a way where they're trying to control the media narrative. Hmm. And one one suggestion, it's it's not a suggestion, one fact is you're failing, horribly failing at that. This information is getting out there, right? And I I I just have a hard time understanding that because are they looking at this like, oh my gosh, we have a dead body that is such a bad reflection on us and it's not i mean people die that's part of having uh, a civilization you know there are going to be situations where unfortunately uh life is lost in in unexplainable circumstances right um yeah it's going to be there's going to be freak accidents there's going to be really you know Horrible situations that seem to have happened for no reason, but they still happened. Um, and it, it doesn't necessarily reflect bad on the university, but that's what makes me question. 
did this specific death reflect bad on the university? And that's why we don't have any answers. We know Scott Green was president at the time of this murder or not murder, uh, <laughs> accidental drowning. Yeah. Um, we know that he has said that a school is only as good as their big, their biggest headlines, you know, or worst headlines. My bad. You're only mm -hmm. as good as your worst headlines or something like that. Um, and he was already coming into being a president from really bad headlines, horrible headlines, and was trying to secure this University of Phoenix deal, which was being heavily scrutinized. He was literally investigated for it because of the issues surrounding that. Yeah. Um, he had a like a meeting or something that was like not supposed to happen off the record. Um but we know I mean, all of these things were reaching out and saying, hey, you need to back out of this. Like the attorney general tried to file a lawsuit on him. Well, it's because he wasn't listening to any of them there. What I assume that is, and I don't want to get too far off topic here, is I assume they were in good faith reaching out to him and saying, hey, you need to stop. I can't tell you there is a federal investigation into this college, but there's a federal investigation into this college <laughs> yeah. and you're putting at risk everything by continuing this back off, you yeah. know, I know. And then he comes out of the book like he's the best president ever to exist right. <laughs> of a university. Right. So, um, and he's got all the good advice. So I just, it makes me wonder if this has more to do with the reflection on the university than it does anything. I mean, we know that he was consulted on the Idaho four case daily, daily briefings with the police. Um, unacceptable. Yeah, absolutely unacceptable. And I assume it was a very si similar situation here. Yeah. It seems like this got swept under the rug very quickly, unfortunately, because, uh, you know, it, Every single human life out there uh, should be appreciated. And even in a really unfortunate situation like this, like uh, I still think it's important to remember people. Um, you know, it, it sounds like the school did not have a vigil for him. It sounds like based off what uh, was said in here, the parents said, you know, his friends had impromptu. Uh, yeah. Impromptu vigils and, and whatnot for him. Um, so I can only assume it's because there was not an official one. I thought there um, was. I mean, maybe there was. I need to go back and look where where I was digging because I see problems here is I was trying to find the 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 legal documents, the police records, mm. trying to find anybody that has came across this. Had they ever come forward and said, hey, here you go. Why are people sent to their legal department yeah why hmm i don't understand it no i can't find anything about a, a vigil that the university did for him the only real response is from moscow police department you should have received a response from the city of Moscow legal department. If you have any questions about the information provided, please contact them at number provided. Hmm. So there isn't a whole lot of juicy information to bring here, but is that juicy information that there is none? You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it makes me ask these questions. Was there really a connection? Was this a continuation of, uh, you know, some kind of disagreement? Was he there at that party, that 90th annual whatever party? Where Where is it? Um, was he there with the Idaho Four? Hmm. I don't know. These are questions that I would like to know. I don't know either. I mean, it's such an odd situation. It really is so weird. And like to have a student die and to give no answers. And that it, it that's was the Delta, Delta Tau Delta 90th annual 
uh, where to go this website it's ball or something right yep. yep yeah yeah that site is like freaking out yeah it's being weird It looks like they did have a celebration of life for him, but I'm not 100% sure what that exactly means. It looks like his mom set up like, um, they listened to his favorite hip hop artist, ate cub, cup pop, bop, cup pop, wait, cup bop. Hundreds of attendees celebrated Hudson's life, uh, lingering till the very end of the memorial. Mm. But I don't, 100% know where this was. Um, this was reported by the UIA. Oh, wait, UI Argonaut. So I think it is a U of I uh, newspaper or something like that. Okay. Well, I hope so. Like I said, if, if there's any information I don't know, it's going to be that. I, I didn't put a lot of time into re researching that specifically <clears throat> because I, I want to know the details of the situation of yep. how he was found. I would yep. like to know the police report. Uh, I would like to have the autopsy. I would like to have the toxicology. Um, you know, are we going to get uh, the, uh, are we going to get the autopsy and find that it was like, um, I'm drawing a blank. Who's the other one under the bridge? Um, oh, oh yeah. Um, gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Joseph Y. Derrick. Joseph Y. Derrick had an injury to the back of his head uh, found frozen under a bridge. Um, are we going to find out that Hudson Lindau had uh, an injury to the back of the head and, you know, drown in an undrownable lake, river, creek? It was a creek. creek. It was a trickle of a creek. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious what you guys think about it. This is really just a prequel to get ready uh, for the conversation next. So um, let those thoughts riot in the comments below. Let me know if you have any additional information. Uh, let me know if you've been stonewalled trying to get this information. How many people have reached out? And, uh, you know, is there any kind of statement? Should we push harder? Let me know. Yeah, I think so. I think there needs to be answers.